Hi, it's Emily. Today, for just practicing, we're going to do a couple of excerpts, and uh, we've asked you guys what you wanted to hear, like what you wanted me to practice, and so we're going to do um, Carmen Entracte, Bizet, uh, Strauss, Till Eulenspiegel, and Prokofiev, Peter and the Wolf, and then uh, also um, Beethoven, Leonore of Overture. So that's what people asked. It's a live stream, so um, if you have questions, comments, you can leave them in the in the chat, and we will participate. And yeah, okay. I think I'll start with the Lin Leonor Overture number three. So um, I haven't played that in a while. I'll go through it once. So here I have sixty-three per eight note. It's very slow the f the beginning. I'll put the metronome because it's uh, tempting to accelerate there. Okay. I just want to check something for the fingerings. Mm, I don't think it's a big deal. Okay, I'll try that. What I see there as um, challenges uh, would be intonation and breathing. So I would advise you to put your tuner maybe when you practice it once in a while, put the tuner and um, make sure you don't go low on those last notes. So, you know, maybe try to get the angle a bit more open to help with that. Um, and when you start with the forte, it's the other way around. You know, you go more in, in inside, of, and then you as you change the angle of the air while you're going uh, piano. And take a huge breath before you start, because you can't really breathe there. So I think that's good. So take a very big breath. Sometimes when I need to do that, what I do is that I empty my lungs, and then I, I refill. This way I can put more air in, so I would go like, and then. Kind of missed it. it. Has to be super um, sl well slurred. That might have been a bit too fast, but what I was trying to figure out is if it was easier to make it well slurred with the F sharp alternate fingering or the normal F sharp. I think the alternate fingering is better for that to make it sound um, well slurred. So that's what I would advise you to do. Uh, so I'll continue.
here I just noticed I would need more air so where's my pencil oops fell okay so I would have to take a big breath before the three E's here and another one after big one because then you can't breathe before like um, you know when you have that long E flat that's slurred to the next bar you can shorten that last note a bit and take a big breath to continue okay uh, I'll just remove things because my I'll go from ta 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 ta. to breathe there. version I'll check okay. maybe there's a mistake might be a mistake okay yeah so at 35 it's not E with E it's E with D there's a mistake here in my music first note E and then second D okay so I think the way I would practice it is um, focus on dynamics because I think someone who asks that maybe wants to hear your dynamics wants to hear if you can play uh, staccato and legato and you also have um, the um, um, you know the portamento like with the dot and the slur that's a bit more um, more heavy type of detached so um, also it's tough not to accelerate in that so I would focus on that and maybe practice it with the recording of the the full orchestral part and also record yourself and listen to see if there's places where you accelerate or or slow down I don't think I'll like I practiced it with the metronome um, should I play it another time without or I continue yeah okay so I'll do the, the second excerpts of, uh, of Leonard 
So here, uh, okay, so beginning, I was playing it at 63 per eight note. So that's what I would recommend, 63 per eight note. You can listen to different versions and just check with your metronome, but that's what I do. And then the second excerpt, I would play at 100, 126 per half note. Okay, I'll try it at 120 just to see. second one and I'll see yeah I was doing it too fast there was something with my B flat no now it's okay okay I'll do that again without the metronome and I'll just um, try to do my crescendo really where it's written, not before. to use double tonguing obviously um, when you start double tonguing like that in the low register make sure you're you're um, I'm not talking loud enough okay so when you uh, start tonguing in the low register like that make sure you're um, you're not putting the you're not pushing the air from too high you know that it's it's a bit because you need to have slow air you know, but everything has to be ready so it starts. But sometimes when we're scared and we, we try too hard, just make it uh, open and easy. So. <laughs> and also you can start by um, practicing it all slurred or slurred by two. You can. <laughs> make sure you don't move here you don't go to too much movement like sometimes it starts um, just think of a mask and the tongue is moving but it doesn't show outside so you can practice in front of a mirror you can also practice the double tonguing upside down like kata kata ka beat to three notes per beat because really you have to feel it per uh, per half note 
And then you have that long, long note to hold. Where do I breathe? I'll check where I breathe. So I breathe before the change. Wait, wait, wait. I don't breathe more than that. Okay, I'll just I'll do it again just to make sure. Oh yeah, and when you have those, it's really the first of the group of four. Ta ta, like the. The skeleton is and then really see it's this one but be a bit difficult to count so maybe you could sing something in your head while it happens yeah and when you go like when it's divided by four when it's eight notes I would say it's more rhythmical like like a little accent on on the on the beat and when you get to the triplets it's more it's lighter and then so it's a different character there um, How do you improve on the tone on that one from exactly? On the last notes? On, Sorry, on this one, I don't like this, but on that piece, on that, that first. Uh, how do you improve on the tone? Um, you could practice it slowly and all slurred. Um, and then what I like to do is, uh, yeah, practice slowly, all slurred, then uh, change the articulation. Sometimes we think the problem is the tone, and then we, we, f we focus a lot on the mouth. Um, but sometimes the problem is that the support is not there enough, or the problem is that there's too much movement, or um, sometimes it might be the intonation that's bugging you, and uh, we're not always very good at knowing what's bugging us. Is it the intonation, the sound, like things get mixed up. So practice maybe um, with a tuner, Make sure you're supporting, make sure um, there's not too much movement. Um, yeah, and like don't practice fast all the time. You can almost make that a uh, sound exercise, you know, like. about being aware of what's going on and um, the support is is really important for the sound so the last note I wouldn't vibrate because it's very soft and you just need to have enough air to get to, to the end of it so it's eight bars plus a little bit so what I would say is how about we sing something in our head one two three four five six um, so we know that the triplet part is four bars, so we could sing that twice in our head while that's going on. Ta -da -ta -ta -da -ta -da -da -ta -ta -da I'll try something like that. I think that was it. 
It's a bit. Uh, I'll try one last time. No, I won't sing in my head. I think it makes me even more, uh, yeah, no, I lose focus. It's not a good idea. It's a bad, uh, yeah. Yeah, I held it twice as long. Okay, so uh, make sure on that last note that you you don't go down because it's very easy to go down, especially like uh, high D can be a bit low naturally. And now your piano and you're holding it for a while. So make sure it doesn't go like. I'm exaggerating, but just uh, maybe take out your your uh, tuner for that. And um, yeah, you'll need to breathe, like take a big breath, you know, at uh, 342 before you do the before that when you do so make that be short so you have a bit more time to don't do ti da 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 no ti da 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 so you have a bit more time to breathe and then you know if you really need to i guess you could go You know, after the the high note, when you do ta 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 ta, you could breathe just after the the little like the little slur there. You could breathe after if you need to, if you don't have enough air. Um, yeah, so don't start fast. Start slowly. You can take your metronome and you know the classic. You start slowly and you increase gradually, and then once in a while practice it slowly again and, and like. Um, alternate between fast and slow and change the articulations and all that stuff. Is there any question? No. no? Okay. So maybe now we do Bizet en tract. I think I've done it before, but it was asked again, so we'll do it. Here in this edition, I have 88. In another edition, I have 72. I think 88 is a bit fast, to be honest. Mm, no, it's not bad. It's a bit easier, maybe even. Okay, I'll try it. So it's written pianissimo, but there you're in uh, in entracte uh, Carmen Bizet. <laughs> you're only with the harp. So yeah, it's piano, but also you want to be heard because it's a real solo. Like sometimes excerpts are not necessarily solo. Sometimes it's a tutti, sometimes it's a whole orchestra and it's just a part that, you know, it's, uh, but there it's a real solo. You're alone with the, uh, the harp accompanying you. And then, um, it's piano, but you have to be heard, especially if you're playing in a big hall. So I think the piano is more of a color than a num uh, the amount of decibels you're playing, really. Um, okay, I'm going to try it. Very legato, that piece. it's a bit boring with the metronome I'm gonna do it again because there are notes that you want to sing more there are notes that you want to spend a little bit more time on and so um, it's not a metronomic piece but I just wanted to do it once like that okay I'll do it again <coughs>
Yeah. Okay. I think it's better like that. I started a bit slower and then I accelerate in it. And uh, very often trills, are, the ending is more difficult than the trill itself. It's I focus more on the ending, how I'm gonna, I, how I'm gonna um, do this transition from the da -da -da. so um, that's where I put my focus. So there is really about breathing and legato. I think. Um, wonder yeah okay so I would write down where to breathe like mostly where you have rests um, then when you have like let's say when you finish a phrase like um, let's say you start from one two three four like after you played for four bars you could take a breath there I don't but like maybe you would need to so that could be a good spot between the B flat and the E flat then the next rest you can take another breath then uh, you're playing two bars and two before A after that E flat you can take a breath there and then at A after the E flat again you can take another one it's pretty easy because it's all slurred da -da 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 -da. after the next E flat when you have the same thing but like if you don't have enough air after A when you have the dotted notes after a dotted note is a good spot to breathe so either after the the B flat or the D that are dotted uh, quarter notes you could breathe there um, da -da -da -da, da -da -da. When, between two slurs is usually a good spot so really pick them and stick to them when you practice. Write them down and be disciplined about where you breathe so you don't have to cut the phrase in the middle. Um, I think that's it for that. Is there any question for that piece, for that uh, excerpt? No? Okay, let's continue. Uh, we'll do Prokofiev was asked. So, Peter and the Wolf. Here. Okay. Here it's 176. You know if I have. In, in both my editions, I will check. Prokofiev. Sorry. One seventy six. Yeah, it's the same. So, let's try it at one seventy six. Just check. If I went higher. Okay. I just had an idea for that G that G and Le Leonard overture. Maybe put um you know, put a sound a drone. And then practice with it for that G and Leonard, the first G. And you could practice like going soft and, and, and loud. And even like practice that whole scale going down. I think I would practice it like that just to uh, be comfortable with it. And of course, like record yourself. It's a very good way. Okay, now let's try that at 176 and see how it goes.
I'm saying right now. I think 176, uh, how about we do it at 88. So obviously you'll start way slower than that. I'll even practice it once at 100. then take a big breath there before you have those uh, 16th notes. doesn't change I feel that when the angle changes just a little bit then the note does, doesn't come out there okay I'll continue at three when you play it that fast like I don't know it sounds mm, sounds a bit like you're rushing or um, I don't know I, I like it a bit slower I'll try it without the metronome I you have to push yourself but to where you sound good you know so if you're doing that for an addition and where you sound good is a bit slower but they don't have a metronome in their hands it's about it's about the, um, the feeling of it you know so if you make those accents and those staccatos and then you make the notes um, come out, you know, like when you have it's that's what you want to, you know, if, if it's musical, maybe you can play it a little bit slower and it won't be a big deal, you know, anyways, start it very slowly. Um, okay, I'll try again. Wait, 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 wait. But when I have like ta -da 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 -da, when I do that, I go a bit slow, a bit uh, softer because it's long and you, you can't really breathe there. So go a bit softer and then just come back for the crescendo. And this way, it's e the crescendo is even more impressive and it's easier for the breathing. And so that's how I would do it. So art like articulations, those accents. Um, and like when you when you have that uh, G, that's a half note, cut it a bit. The second time you play it at three, you have G and then F, so you have a little bit less time, but don't do that F too long and take a big breath there. Um, and when you breathe, really breathe enough, you know, don't go like this, that's not efficient. Um, sometimes when we breathe, we try to go too fast and that makes us close our throat. I feel for myself, that's, what has, what, that's what's happening. Um, what I try to do is just open the throat and think think slow fast when I breathe in so 
like a accelerando in the in the breath and it's way more efficient than trying to go fast right away uh you can try it it's all about it's a feeling you know you try it and you see if you feel it is there any question for that so let's continue oh, yeah. i'll try it once a bit slowly and then i'll anticipating on that because if you're a bit late you have to fill the f the whole flute with air and if your pinky is a bit late like it's not going to come out right away so and also sometimes when it doesn't come out it's because here we have a little leak the, the finger is not covering the hole completely so you can put a plug uh, a lot of people do it there's no shame in that so just do it if you need to it's be it's about the result who cares if you're using a plug it's about how it sounds um okay i'll continue <laughs> Because that's where you want to feel that it's it's kind of resting on that note. I'll do it a bit slower here. But what's the speed of that? Wait. Okay, I didn't have it. I'm kind of uh, confused here. Because that's very fast. The third are all. Third are all. What was prima? Was 92, I think. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Because I was like, <laughs> if it's uh, 176, it's a, like, I remember listening to that. So 92 would be the real speed. Okay. You see, I would have to work up to it because um, I would even advise to practice it per eighth note in the beginning. It would be easier. Like, let's say 120 per eighth note. Like, <clears throat> and even that is too fast like if you're really just starting you'll need to be doing it way slower but if you do it in, in eight note you need to feel the the, the quarter note still like so you know what's the upbeat and the downbeat that's very important now i'm gonna try to do it at the real speed just to see you see i'm a bit uh, it's a bit too fast for me i'll play it like this do that then the next 
next one is 92. That's an arpeggio of A flat major. Like those things are mostly arpeggios. You know, you have to f to group elements. I know I say that a lot, but group elements so that you don't need to um, really think of each note, but you think of a whole group of notes. It's way more easy. So here it's an A flat ma major arpeggio at excerpt two at eight. So it's so it's just that. So uh, you can practice it as a technic tec technique exercise, you know, or just practice your A, ma a, min a flat major arpeggio. here yet but okay so you should start it slowly you can practice it with different rhythms different uh, articulations like I remember practicing it like this and then instead of doing long short I would do short long good for everything that we've seen like if, if it's fast you, you can practice it like that then one long three short and then the opposite three short one long you can also do one beat plus one note very fast and then you stop and you go back from there sometimes it's easier to do fast for a short period of time than do the whole thing so that's why i practice like that then you can go back to slowly and all detached. And so on and so on. So I'll practice, I'll just play it once. It's a bit fast 176 even for me uh yeah for everyone i think maybe some people can do it i think it's a mistake i think it might be a mistake that last um you know zero i'm not sure maybe Maybe, I'm not sure. Okay, then the last one. Um, I'll try it once.
also is is conception like how you feel it how you on which notes you're gonna kind of rest i know there's not much rest when it's that fast but also you know in in the one just I, that i just finished i forgot to say when you get those triplets like make sure you really get the rhythm because if you don't understand the rhythm you can practice your fingers as much as you want it's not gonna work like it all comes from here your understanding is is the key it's the first thing because if you practice something you're not understanding you're practicing a mistake sometimes it's worth just singing the rhythm and even like start practicing it slowly per eight note one two three four one two three four one two three one two three one and then you go a bit faster one two three four one two three four one two three one two three one then a bit faster one two three four one two three four one two three one two three one then when you go fast enough you go per quarter note you know you start per eight note you go faster and then you start per quarter note again um yeah okay i'll try that one twelve here so here at the excerpt three it's really when you have those da 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 dum, you know, those. <laughs> you see, you have an accent on the first note. And really visualize it as a decrescendo there. It's way easier to do it like that. Because if you try to do. It's not really what it is. Because what you want to hear is. skeleton of, of, of this whole thing so you need to it needs to be clear in your head that those are the important notes so I'll play it once with the metronome piece the flute is the bird so of course it's not gonna do the theme because the bird is more exuberant you know um, start slowly like I said for the rest and make sure you really hear the thumb bum 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 note it's not the same as when you have 16th notes the rhythm is not the same it's not so it's like ta -da -dum, bum, bum. and the other one is ta -da -dum, bum, bum. so it's different I think that's it for this one it's good yeah somebody wants to know Ayush wants to know how can we improve the lung capacity so I can play for a longer time in one breath um, there's a lot of things you can do you can um, you can try to sometimes just hold your breath while you're doing something else. You know, take a breath in and then hold it for a long period of time. Because sometimes it's not that we don't have air anymore, it's that we want new air. So just go like this and then wait. Also, something that's very good, I do that in my bed before I fall asleep and it even helps with sleeping. It's uh, I sleep better when I do it. It's um, I try to take very 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 long breaths and I count the seconds or I count 
sometimes I use my heartbeat as a metronome to count. So I start usually with four. So I breathe in four, I, br I hold for four, I breathe out four, I hold for four, and usually I still have a little bit of air left and then I'll, I'll just really empty my lungs and then I do it again. And sometimes I can get to 15, which means that I take a breath per minute. And um, I feel that that helped a lot. And then I think it's about taking efficient breaths and not losing all our hair, all our air at once. If you have the book uh, De La Sonorité by Marcel Moise, go to page 10 and do the exercise as it's written. Um, in the book, um, he puts 60 per quarter note to practice it. When I start with my students, usually we start a bit faster because they can't do it. And also there's there's a crescendo, decrescendo. And sometimes I say, just do it piano the whole way through. But the point is to just breathe in those spots. So then you learn how to manage your air because maybe your air capacity is a bit better than you think, but you're not managing it well. It's like a budget. You know, you have this budget, you have to deal with it and know how, you know where to spend it, not, not all at once. So that's a very good exercise. If you have the book De la Sonorité by Mar Marcel Moise, page 10, uh, you have, and then you have pages and pages of that exercise. And uh, that's very good to practice um, that. And we have a video about breathing that's pretty complete about how to breathe and all that stuff. Okay, now, Till Erlenspiegel. So I don't know in English what it means. In French, it means espiègle, like, it's a bit like someone who um, plays tricks on people. Yeah. And, uh, okay. I remember playing that a long time ago. But, let's see. So here I wrote 92 to 100. So I'll go at 96. fingering here might be easier yeah you can take the r the middle finger instead of the ring finger on that F sharp might be easier not to crack you know understand the rhythm and like I remember when I started it I practiced per eight note like you know that those types of a and then a bit faster and so on and so on and after a while don't see it like uh, it's like a, a trait it's not each note it's like this thing going up you know and you can practice it going up and down like this um, all those things you can practice up and down it becomes easy you know and maybe you'll have to practice it slowly maybe you'll practice it all detached all those things um, here just before five you have this 
thing going up and then don't don't forget you have a rest just there on the beat so one two three four five six one two three four five six da 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 one two three four five six one two three four five six da 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 you know just don't play on the beat um so it's like da 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 pam 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 or da 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 pa da 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 so again like i said make sure you really uh, the rhythm is understood and i feel the best way to understand rhythms is to um subdivide so start playing it per eight note you know and you can play it per eight note for weeks until you really can play per dotted eight uh, per dotted half no, uh, qu dotted quarter note and still feel the eight note so you have the those two feelings in at the same time in your body and your brain i'll practice seven i'll practice it slowly once i'll even do it uh, i'll do takata 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 I know it's slurred, but I'll do it like this, like that. I'll just write down that I have a B flat because I had a doubt and then it took me a little second that I should not need. No, I'll do it slurred. So here it's really you could just think takatam 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 as if it were all uh, quarter notes but I think the conductor settles in two. So I remember when I practiced it, when I learned it, I did it both ways. I did it by thinking it in, you know, by two eight notes and then thinking it by three eight notes. And I even wrote where the beats would be, you know? So I'll do that. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Now I'll try it slowly per dotted quarter. <laughs> having to practice that more than the rest. I'll do it one minute again, once again slowly. it um, so practice it both ways like I said um, and then I'll continue okay and then at 32 
two you see you have those things on the upbeat so it's like one two three one two three so you really have to subdivide so you can feel those things one two three 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 three i'll try it again four so the conductor will go tom and then you guys one two three one two three one two one two one two one two tom pom 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 so it's gonna be ta da dum pa da 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 dum wait ta da 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 dum ta da dum pa 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 da dum pom two three one two three ta da dum pa da da dum so you can practice it like I just did you know by one two one two one two one two one two three one two three one two one two you have to feel it you know so it's a good way to do it so if we're at 92 here it means wait a minute uh, 184 divided by no oh, I don't know wait 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 At 92 per dotted, so I would have 2 times 3 and then divided by 2. I didn't have my tea this morning, <laughs> I'm a bit slow. <laughs> okay, and then divided by 2, so I would have 1. Um, One thirty-eight. I'll write it here so I can remember. So one thirty-eight per per quarter note. So that's that for that. But like when you practice it, you can put it per eight note like this. faster or slower as you feel you know um, I'll try to do it the whole thing without the metronome um, I'll try to count the rests as well because I wasn't doing it all the time but in an addition some like I think they would want you to do it to see that they you can count rests okay The rhythm it's a bit uh pa 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 pam tagadam pagadam pagadam tagadam pagadam so yeah maybe I would do it like put the beats there ta 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 tam tagadam pagadam pagadam tagadam pagadam so write like make little lines 
where the beads are so you make sure you stay very steady also i think before 130 uh, before 35 uh, no 34 before 34 i made a mistake like i started playing way louder and i don't think it's it's still piano you know but you still feel like doing a crescendo there listen to some versions and see if they do a crescendo there that would be interesting but it's not a big deal just make sure you really understand that rhythm that it's clear start by subdividing doing everything per eighth note very slowly increase gradually and then when you go faster and you feel that it's too fast once in a while go back to slow you know because that's how you'll build it and um, listen to it it's a good idea to listen to it First, it's a very nice piece, plus it, it will help with understanding the rhythm if you know the piece. Mm -hmm. Is there any question? Yeah, no, but that's it. Uh, could you recommend some... I usually want to know, can you also recommend some music I can play considering that I just started getting into classical music? Um, maybe go check on um, flutetunes.com. Uh, they have a very good selection there. It's all free, flutetunes.com. And there's a like most popular on the side and you can click there. Because what I understand is you already play the flute but you just started classical, so you might like those. Because they're, you know, um, that could be something. If not, there's a lot of books for beginners. You know, you can look um, the 40 Little Pieces by Moise. There's... Uh, the Donald Peck book, it's a blue book, uh, what is it called? Solos uh, for, Solos for Flute, 36 repertoire pieces. And also we're gonna release our, um, I wanna finish this. The What we thought would be a book um, will be a video accompanied by a PDF that people will be able to purchase. Um, it's a flute method, but instead of making a book flute method, we'll make a video with PDFs that a to practice what's in the video and I think it's going to be easier for people who are self-taught or even t people with teachers but you know to have uh, when you practice at home it's uh, it's a good um, good accompaniment I think because we're somewhere else now you know books with CDs I think uh, have maybe done their time <laughs> for you, you get the visual aspect of what to do a bit better I think so. Uh, Isaiah wants to know what's the number one thing that most beginner flute players do wrong. <coughs> I've been playing trumpet and saxophone for years and I just got a cheap uh, flute to mess around with but I ended up liking it more than I thought. What people do wrong? Hmm. The number one thing. I think the number one thing is um, rolling the flute in too much and then the, the whole of the embouchure is closed and then there's no sound, you know? Just remember, the lower lip shouldn't cover more than a third to a quarter of the of the hole here, and then also the upper lip shouldn't come above and 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 uh, cover it. It should be open. Uh, flute. The flute is an open instrument, and if you want to have this whistle, you need to have an angle. So just keep it open here. That's what I see the most. That thing like that, um, and then. The other thing is the air, you know, managing the air, breathing in enough, supporting enough, but that takes time. So, yeah, the sound is always a big, a big um, uh, challenge for flutists, for beginners, I think, mm -hmm. because it's really an instrument where you have to f make your sound. That's uh, like a, it's not like a piano that you, you press, you still have to make your sound, but like on the flute, it's really obvious you have to make your sound. Uh, what are some pieces? What are some pieces to start off with uh, when you want to start learning Bach? Hmm. Well, we have the sonatas, but maybe um, maybe some slow movements of uh, of some of his sonatas. You know, start with slow movements. I think this one is very nice.
this one. What is it? Um, yeah, it's a Sicilian. If you check back Sicilian, you should find it. It's a very nice piece. And if it's the first time, that could be a good one. But all his sonatas are beautiful. I play on a Sankyo artist. Uh, I think they don't make this exact model anymore. And a Wimberly head joint, which is a head joint that was made by hand by a flute maker that I think doesn't make them anymore either. <laughs> yeah. So that's it. No more questions. Okay. So we will have uh, the flute con this summer if you're interested. Oh, I have a question. Oh. I'm currently preparing a hair mod. It's my hair mod. Oh, hi. I'm currently preparing the first few measures of daftness, the 12 note groups at the very beginning. I listen to recordings to get my tempo. I need tips. We didn't play daftness, but. Yeah. The tempo. Well, I wouldn't worry that yeah. much about the tempo in that piece. I would. It's more about hearing all the notes, you know? Yeah. What I would do is try to figure out. Usually, people miss one. You know, there's one that we don't hear well. I would try to figure out which one and focus on that note. That's what I do in that. Uh, <laughs> hmm. Just, you know, the first note, maybe sustain it a bit more. And practice it like this. It becomes easy and then make sure we hear all the notes and then I wouldn't worry too much about the tempo it's it's like an upbeat it's going to the G sharp so focus on that G sharp oh, the very beginning of Daphne probably the oh that yeah, is that the very beginning? Uh, what is it? Let me check in my other book. Daphnis. Just a second. Okay. This thing? Yeah. 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 I wrote 44 in my music. It's written 50, but I wrote 44. Because it's fast. I might have played in the orchestra. Da, 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 da. 50. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I think of it as two sixths, you know, two six, uh, two groups of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One. And it's, it's always the same thing. So it's really. a group for me I don't know exactly what to say like practice it uh, start you know you can practice it by groups of three and then of six and then you know but once you get the hang of it it's uh, it always repeats itself so should I uh, mm -hmm. talk about flute con so flute con <laughs> will be like a flute conference online a bit like a festival with the uh, you know you can play and you can also listen to others and uh, you can you don't have to play a piece it can be a study it can be an excerpt it can be just practicing uh, let's say you have trouble with the high register we can do work on that it's very interesting because you get to learn from others as well and uh, it's always very interesting to listen other people learning and and you're relaxed and you listen and you're like oh I do this too and 
So if you're interested, you can go at flutecon.com and sign up and we'll send you all the information very soon because we'll do that in August. Uh, if you're looking for a flute, you can check flutesforsale.com. It's the number four and use our code TFC and that helps us out because uh, you get perks and it's, uh, it helps us as well. And if you want flute lessons, you can email us at inf um, info at the flute channel.com and we'll send you all the info for that. We can do flute lessons online through Skype and um, it works very well. Uh, what else? Am I forgetting something? So yeah, I think uh, that's it for today. I hope this was helpful. And if you liked it, please like it. If you have any comments, just leave them below. And thanks for watching. See you next time.